Okay, this is a video lecture for freefall. So last time we discussed about kinematic equations. So kinematic equations is or has this formulas here. So we have four equations for kinematic equations. The kinematic equation for free fall is just the same as the kinematic equations for constant acceleration motion. But uh, the only difference is that the acceleration for the formula is the acceleration due to gravity. And that is represented by letter G. So we have here letter G and letter G. So all of the accelerations in free fall kinematic equations is equal to the acceleration due to gravity value which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so what is free fall? So free fall is a state where motion is influenced by gravity only and that the object accelerates at 9.8 meters per second squared which is the acceleration due to gravity. So anything that falls, if there is no air resistance or air resistance is negligible, meaning uh, is almost zero or equal to zero, so that means um, the object is falling due to the influence of gravity alone. And if that happens, the object should move at 9.8 meters per second squared acceleration. In other words, its velocity value will increase by 9.8 meters per second for every second of fall. So you have here the equations for free fall. So the same as with our constant acceleration kinematic equation formula or kinematic equations, but the only difference is that we have the g value as the acceleration. So let us have some examples. So a ball was dropped from a building with negligible air resistance. Again, you would notice that you would often see this one as air resistance is negligible or there is no air resistance so that the object would fall freely. So meaning it would not be in free fall if there is air resistance. So as always it should be indicated that air resistance is negligible. So reaches the ground in 7.2 seconds. How high is the building? So if you have here the building and a ball was dropped on top of the building, let us say at that level, then you are asked how high is the building? So from this problem, you can compute for the height of the building by just knowing the time of fall. You follow? So let us now go through the given. So we have the given time and there are also other givens that may not be uh, indicated but it's in there. So the first given that is not uh, or should, that is not always written is the acceleration due to gravity. So since an object is falling that should accelerate by 9.8 meters per second squared. So that is our G value. And then we also have a given since it was dropped meaning its initial velocity before it was dropped is zero. So those are the usual given that may not be uh, shown in the problem. So not necessarily shown in the problem. So we are asked of how high is the building. So meaning how tall is the building. So we are asked of distance. So what, which formula has a distance? Uh, variable. We have here equation 2, 3, and 4. Okay, we will eliminate equation 1. Okay, next, which formula has acceleration? So we have acceleration value. So this one has no acceleration value, so we will eliminate that formula. 
Next, which formula has initial velocity variable? So, this one has initial velocity variable. Okay, pwede. And then this one also has initial velocity variable. Next is, which formula has time variable? So, time variable we have here time. But we do not have time here. So, we will not use that equation or formula. So, we will be using this formula. So, we have d is equals to velocity initial times time plus 1 half gt squared. And then, substituting the, vari uh, the values of each variable. So, we have 0 times, since initial velocity is 0, times 7.2. So, we know that this one is just equal to 0. And then, we have 1 half times 9.8 which is the acceleration, and then the time, which is 7.20 seconds. So, computing, the answer is 2.54 meters. Again, I am considering the number of significant figures. In a way, um, in your altimeter, you only need one decimal place for you to get the accurate answer. So, significant figure is not really applied in altimeter. Okay, so next question, the same question, what is the velocity before it touches the ground? Meaning to say the, the very moment that it, before it touches the ground, what is its final velocity? Because as soon as it touches the ground, it would stop, so its velocity becomes zero right then and there. Or it may bounce if it is elastic. So we are not anymore interested with what is happening after the bounce but before the bouncing or before it reaches or touches the ground. So we are asked of the velocity. So again, the formula we have was initial velocity is equal to zero. Then we have acceleration due to gravity or g equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. And then our time value. And we also was able to compute for the distance, which is 254 from previous answer. Right. So, question now is, which formula are we going to use? So, first formula. Now, we are asked of the velocity final. Again, we are asked of the velocity final because we already have initial velocity, which is zero. So we are asked of velocity final. So velocity final is here and also here, but there is no gravity here, so we cannot use that one. This one, we don't have velocity final, we cannot use this one. And then for this one, it has velocity final, so we may use that one. So which among the two are we going to use? Now, we can actually use both equation, equation 1 and 4. So let's have first equation 1. So this is, if we rearrange equation 1, it will be Vf minus Vi equals Gt. So after cross multiplication, you'll have this result. And then transposing Vi from negative, it becomes positive. And then substituting values, we have initial velocity 0, then gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we have the time equal to 7.2 seconds. And the answer is 70 0.6 meters per second. So this is using equation number one. What about equation number four? So let us check if we will arrive at the same answer. So we have Vf squared minus Vi squared equals 2GD. And then manipulating it to, um, to compute or to solve for Vf. So we have Vf is equal to square root of 2GD plus vi squared so we transposed vi to the other side and then get the root of the square of this square so substituting values we have this one and then our answer is just the same as or equal to yeah. so meaning to say either formula will give you the same answer and we in this equation the difference between them is that here we use time 7.2 and here we use distance, which we have computed a while ago. You follow? 
So are there any questions with regards to? So that will be all for today.